now that we've decided, I guess, to follow McIntyre and we reject uh, Nietzsche, and we're going to go and have a look at Aristotle and bring Aristotle back a little bit, or at least embrace a kind of Aristotelianism. Um, if, if that all goes through, then uh, what does McIntyre do next? Well, it's not surprising that we're going to get a little bit of a history lesson. So after chapter 9, we turn uh, to chapters 10 through 13. Those are basically a history uh, of the virtues and um, what McIntyre wants to do, and so Aristotle's in there, he's going to talk about the ancients, you know, Plato, Aristotle, and then on and up to, well, he's going to start with the, the uh, heroic society, so Homer and the gang, looking at that, then, then the response to Homeric societies, then eventually up to uh, uh, medieval ethics, and uh, He's really what he's trying to do is extract a core concept out of it all that he wants to explore in chapter 14, which is arguably one of the most important chapters, or certainly could be say, said to be important in the sense of uh, it's the chapter that most people tend to concentrate on when they read after virtue, as far as I can tell. Because uh, uh, that's usually, this is where McIntyre really states what, what his position is regarding uh, virtue. So pulling out this core concept from history and trying to articulate it in chapter 14 uh, to give us essentially what he thinks, that is what McIntyre thinks, is the nature of the virtues. Um, so let's, let's follow along, see what he has to say. So first he says we're going to start with the notion that virtues are exhibited in practices. And this, is, this term, this one, is a, that's a key term for McIntyre is the is is the term practice. So we have to expand upon and develop and think through what McIntyre uh, thinks a practice is. Well, a practice is basically a coherent, cooperative, uh, kind of human social activity. Um, practices have standards of excellence. Um, practices have internal and external goods. An internal good is exactly you know, very deeply connected to the practice and an exter and sort of necessarily co connected to the practice and an external good would be something that's kind of a byproduct of, uh, of, of the practice. Now, this sounds pretty abstract because uh, it largely is at this point. So let's, let's uh, follow McIntyre with a little bit, uh, a little bit of the, uh, the concrete angle on these things and it should become pretty clear. Um, so, if we look at the first idea that virtues are exhibited in, in, in practices, you know, uh, virtues are, you know, in the Homeric account of the, the virtues in, in heroic societies, you know, to, to excel at, you know, the virtue of, of fighting or whatever is going to be in the context of, uh, of war and success in war and success at the games. Um, or uh, like Achilles, you know, is the you know very virtuous type. He's very successful at, at war and fighting. Um, and Aristotle uh, also refers to uh, you know well-defined natures, uh, well-defined examples of human practice like flute playing, war, geometry, all kinds of things. When he speaks about excellence as well, so. Um, there, it's it's a bit of a larger thing. It's not just simply a practice. Is not just simply a skill. Like for instance, you could be very skilled at throwing, uh, let's say, uh, throwing a football. Where you can get a nice little clean little spiral, and you're accurate. That that's certainly a skill. Um, but that's that's not a practice. Um, the game of football is the practice. So you would exhibit your skill within the context of the game, and also. Um, you could become, you know, you, you could actually be very skillful at throwing a football, right? Let's say, um, let's say when you go to a carnival and you can throw a football and you can, you know, win lots of prizes. But that doesn't mean that if you stepped onto a football field that you'd be a good quarterback. You might not be able to handle all the decisions that you have to make when, uh, when you're trying to throw the ball at that nice little neat spiral and throw it to a receiver down the field when a bunch of people are trying to basically clobber you in, in the process. So, so this virtue of, of being a good quarterback is in the context of the practice of playing 
uh, uh, football. And there are standards of excellence. You can't just walk in there and demand uh, to be a, a good quarterback where people recognize you. You have to perform it. So the standards are not simply uh, the standards that one, one selects or chooses. You enter the game and the standards are there and you will be judged by those standards. Um, so again, um, you know, if uh, I like to plant, uh, well, put it this way, I, I like to plant flowers and, and do a few things every spring, but I wouldn't exactly say that I'm, uh, I'm a farmer or I'm engaged in agriculture. So the practice is something, my, or I wouldn't call myself a gardener just because I throw a few seeds in. So that's it. So even the practice of gardening is a is a much more involved notion than simply being able to uh, plant a seed here and there. So I, I I think that we you know this this idea of practice being a coherent and cooperative social activity is starting to become a little bit uh, clearer. Uh, McIntyre to make this a little bit. Even, even, even to clarify it a little more, has you know gives us a very simple and but I think illuminating uh, thought experiment. It is the notion of play, teaching a child to play chess. So, for instance, uh, in this thought experiment, you know, imagine that you're teaching an intelligent child uh, uh, to play chess, but the kid's not very interested in playing chess. Well, what do you do? Well, if you've ever worked with children uh, trying to, to get them to do stuff. Um, you know, the standard thing is you'd say, well, look, uh, you get a little reward. And in this case, the reward is external. So the, there's, a, there's a, a good associated with, with the playing of chess for the child. Uh, and, and it's an external one, but you want to move the child towards an, ex, an internal good associated with playing chess. So let's think about this. So the kid's intelligent enough to learn the rules of chess, but it's not really very interested. And you say to the kid, well, look, um, I'll play you a game of chess, uh, uh, you know, I'll play with you uh, once a week. And if you play and you put your, you put some energy into it, I'll give you a piece of candy. So the candy is an external good to the game, right? So the kid goes, oh, okay, well, I, I like candy, so I'm going to get that if I play. Then I say to the kid something like this. Now, I want you to become decent at the game. Um, so I'm going to play, when we play, I'm going to play at a higher level. I'm not going to just let you win, but I'm not going to make it impossible for you to win. But in order for you to beat me, um, you're going to have to really give it, a, you're going to have to try. You're going to have to work hard to beat me. So I'll play you at the level, like supposing I'm really good at chess, I'll play you at a level that's a good challenge for you, kid. And guess what? Um, in addition to giving you that piece of candy just for playing me, if you can beat me, I'll give you an extra piece of candy. So you play me every week, get a piece of candy. But if you beat me, that week you'll get two. So I kind of up the ante, right? And um, in, in that sense, I'm uh, 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 trying to uh, get the child to not just to play for the candy, but to play to win. So I'm trying to build in... Uh, a variety using external goods. I'm trying to increase the child's interest in the playing of chess. Now, what's the uh, what's the goal here? The goal, it's obvious, is is not to get the kid to get more candy, but to get the kid to like chess and to appreciate the playing of chess, the enjoyment of playing of chess, and the enjoyment about thinking about the pieces, uh, moving, the enjoyment of plotting and planning, if you like, a, a strategic attack and exercising it, learning chess tactics, chess maneuvering, all these kinds of things, and learning the skills that are intrinsic to, to uh, chess. So not just simply getting an external good like the candy, but getting an internal good about becoming a better chess player and the pleasure that's associated with that. So there's the internal good that you really only get from chess or those internal kinds of uh, uh, pleasures that you get from things like chess and great literature and Mac, Mac, you know, talking painting and, and these kinds of things. So there are external goods associated with them and there are the internal goods. Um, and also there's a sort of moral dimension that comes where you know, uh, the, the, you know, the, the, this, the, the standard of excellence that, that, you know, the child is like, you, you try to beat me and, uh, you do it honestly. Right. So, you know, like learning, you know, good sportsmanship and being able to handle a loss and recover and, and to win honestly and fairly. 
Um, so then the child will learn that, you know, to, that cheating is to cheating in the game is to cheat himself out of, of certain things. So, uh, um, so the child is motivated to play, to play, to win, to win properly and cleanly. And so you can see a whole bunch of stuff is, uh, is gained, but the main thing is that there are these, uh, uh, internal and external goods. The external good could have been candy. But if the kid didn't have a sweet tooth, I'd say, well, wait, I don't know, maybe like a comic book or something else. There could have been some other kind of external good. Those are just contingent, right? Depending on the idiosyncratic preferences of the kid, you know, maybe likes hamburgers or whatever. It doesn't really matter. But it's some kind of good that the kid uh, that's, uh, uh, you know, only contingently attached to chess. But a kid who likes hamburger or a kid who likes candy, I'm trying to instill in them a love of chess and the benefits, the intrinsic uh, benefits, the intrinsic goods that come through it. So um, these things are the same thing. External goods, uh, uh, you know, for adults are prestige and money and power and these kinds of things. Um, and these uh, uh, can achieve, be achieved through alternative means or, or whatnot. So um, there's the emphasis on the contingent connection here. And the goal is to create more virtuous people by having them look for intrinsic goods in various practices. Um, and of course, there are going to be certain kinds of intrinsic goods that are connected to either a particular practice or maybe a closely related family of uh, practices. So practices involve the achievement of goods, standard of excellence, and of course, a sense of obedience to others. So you learn, uh, uh, you know, uh, a respect for authority and and that kind of notion and that and that you learn to accept being judged in certain ways because these standards of excellence are not ones you pick they are ones that you agree that are imposed upon you um and you accept you accept the authority of the standards um you accept your own inadequacies when you don't meet the standards um you then turn and try to improve yourself to uh, uh, to meet them so the authority of the tra of the the tradition or the practice uh, rules out this emotivist understanding of ethics insofar as the the standards are objective right I didn't make up chess I didn't make up uh, uh, so myself as I teach the kid if the kid got mad uh, when I say oh you're not doing very well well it's not just me saying that it's 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 the practice and I'm just part of the practice I'm part of the chess community. And in that sense, the standards are being imposed of the community through me, but it's not my particular choice there. So this raises this up, this whole notion of a practice raises uh, the judgment uh, up from simple subjectivist or emotivist kinds of things that you have in the failure of the enlightenment project. Um, and also, uh, uh, you know, it, it also raises an interesting and important point about internal and, act, and distinguishing uh, um, an even more important aspect of the distinction between internal and external goods. Think about this way. Think about it this way. External goods really are objects of competition because they're like property. Like that candy is 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 like uh, a property, right? And and property, uh, you know, external manifestations of uh, desires, you know, like, you know, I want to possess that um, and that piece of property. There is a, a, a sense of, um, well, the more that that you have of property, the less that's available for others. So external goods, they function according to that kind of logic, that the more external goods I get, like power and money and prestige, the less there is for other people, right? And so for McIntyre, external goods are, are they're more like stepping stones, but they're, they're, they shouldn't be treated as the end, right? Because they are external and they do create uh, a, a kind of erosion of virtue. And we'll get to that in a second. The internal goods though, these are, uh, uh, they're certainly outcomes of competition because I'm competing with the child. There is a, a kind of quasi adversarial relationship. However, when the child achieves these, uh, uh, these internal goods, unlike with the external goods, I'm out some candy, right? I have a bunch of candy and I got to give it to the kid. Uh, and I'm so I have less candy or I have less to give other children or less in my, in my candy jar. But when the child starts acquiring the intrinsic good of chess, I'm not 
less of a player for that. Um, no, I, that's not taking anything away from me or anyone else. As a matter of fact, what what's happened is the trails is acquiring the intrinsic good of being a good chess player and thereby the community becomes a better chess playing community as a whole. So there's no sort of taking away from any member of the community by someone becoming, by this kid becoming a, a good chess player. In, in fact, you can think of it this way, um, uh, if, this, if, if this child becomes a good chess player and becomes better and better, what, what's really going on here? Um, others, I may start, you know, learning, right? So, so the master learns from the student. So I could in turn, as this uh, child becomes an increasingly better chess player, I start to learn from this child. Other people could learn. And so the quality of the community, that, that is the chess playing community, engaging in the chess playing practice, improves. So the gain is actually not just even, it, the, the gain of for of when, when it's an intrinsic good is not just simply not uh, 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 sort of not depriving others as it, as it would if it were an external good, but it actually benefits others. So by this child becoming a better player, everybody becomes a little bit better. And we often say this, you know, if you want to get good, you play in a good community. That is, uh, you know, if you want to become a good hockey player, you got to play with other people that are good. And then the better you get, the standards of the game just keep going up. Um, you could make this, you could continue this kind of intrinsic good if you look at the history of sports uh, um, as well. The, uh, the moves that are made in professional chess now are more complicated. The, uh, the skill levels and the, and the speed of sports games and things like that now are faster and more difficult than they were, let's say, 50 years ago. You can look at sports records. Um, and, and notice that the practice has uh, got better. So what we've got now uh, is a clear distinction between internal, external goods, the notion of a practice, and all this, through this thought experiment, this discussion will lead us to McIntyre, because remember, don't lose sight of what's going on here. He wants to bring back uh, this notion of a virtue ethics. And so this is all this is leading up to the next part of chapter 14, of McIntyre's notion of virtue. Stay tuned for that.